Hey Inventor users, this is Chris. I figured I would just go ahead and throw up a video showing how I do my neurals um, to kind of answer Backerman's question above. You, you know, this is cutting actual geometry, so the parts will get heavy. Just keep that in mind. This is not something you want to do on every part that's going to have a neural, but if you do have a special case where you need to show something on a drawing, but you don't want to have shaded views, this is a workaround for that. Plus, you can also export this out if you guys are going to do um, photorealistic renders of your product. So I've got a part here. Let's just assume there's some threads on there. I didn't take the time to cut the threads in, but I've got a, um, a chamfer on both ends. And then I got a little fillet here because uh, I'm just used to rounding off those corners. None of that's going to matter for what we're doing here. But um, one thing that's important, you, do, you guys do want to be friends with your parameters here. So I'm going to take this one. This one's the diameter. We're just going to call that diameter. Um, that way we have access to that later. And then I want to say this is my extrusion length. So we'll just call this one length. That first length, um, that'll all come into play here in a minute. So I'm just going to make those key values. You guys don't have to do this, but it definitely is easier to control this with a form later than it is to have to go into parameters or open up sketches. So what we're going to do here is, like I said, we've got this shape. I'll try to do this real quick so you guys aren't watching a 30 minute video. We're going to sketch on this face, and then we're going to project that, uh, basically that right there. But seeing as that edge is tied to this fillet and this chamfer, we don't want to project that edge. So what I like to do is just kind of grab this surface right here, make sure we're grabbing that surface. And then what we're going to do is draw a, a straight line up and just kind of terminate on that um, diameter. And we're going to make this a construction line. We're going to leave this one um, as a geometry line. Then what we're going to do is it's really hard to kind of attach right there. If you come out here, you can do it. But it's the closer you get to the snap thing, uh, the snapping, it, the less you are. So what I like to do is just kind of come out here and in space and draw those lines. And I can trim those in a minute. Now here's where we're going to want to start adding some parameters in. But... You guys would just type in 45 there if you want your neural to be 90 degrees. So I am just making mine match and then I'll come, I'm hitting X uh, there and then I can trim this line. Uh, X is shortcut for trim. And then what I like to do is add a point here and I add a point there because sometimes if you try to grab this vertex and dimension up to the end of this line, it'll flip it to the other side and then that is on the outside of the diameter. So we don't want that. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to make sure we get the point, not that vertex, but we want that point and we want this point. We're going to add a dimension here and let's just dimension that to point zero two. That's a pretty big um, neural, but you guys uh, will see what's going on here in a second. So what I'm doing is I'm picking the size of the neural instead of dimensioning from the center point up to that vertex. So what we've got, we've got a couple dimensions here real quick. So let's just jump into the um, parameters and let's just add these in here real quick. So we've got this 45 degree. We're going to say this is a um, neural angle. Yep. Okay. And then we're going to say this is neural depth. There we go. And we want to make both of those uh, key values so we can get those into the um, form. Okay, so what we do here is relatively easy at this point. We're just going to do a coil. So we're going to um, come down to create feature. We're going to go to coil. We're going to grab this geometry. So if it's not grabbing that geometry right away, if you just leave your mouse still for a second, uh, it'll this little pull down will pop up and you can grab that profile body. And however you guys want to do this is kind of up to you. What I like to do here is I'm going to pick something that looks good to me. Um, I don't think there's any exact science here with the neural because you can use these three options if you want. Uh, we can do revolution and height. That's fine if you guys want to do that because maybe that'll tie, tie into the extrusion length. But let's go ahead and pick our axes first and we'll do this one. So what this one is telling us is that Hey, it's going to do uh, 0.22 revolutions, okay? So it's not going all the way around. If we want to go all the way around, we'd have to put one, so it flips all the way around. But we don't want that. So maybe we do 0.25 because, well, I don't know. 0.25 looks like it's 
too curvy. You know, that's 45 degrees. If that's what you want, that's fine, but let's do like 0.125, maybe something like 875. Let's do that. So let's do 1.8 or 0.1875, and then we've got that length. So if we go back down to, um, let's see if our parameter is going to show up here. We've got neural depth. There we go. We've got length. So that's going to give us the length of this extrusion, which should be fine because this does have the chamfer and the fillet there, so it'll go outside of those. So now we get to use, we're kind of using our parameters that we already have, and then we wanna make sure that we're cutting this, we're cutting material away. Okay, now this is a huge neural. You guys have never make something this big. I'm just doing it this big so you can see what's going on. So we've cut this really nice 90 degree neural. So from there to there is gonna be 90 degrees, and we've gone the distance of this extrusion from this surface here, if I can grab it, from that surface there to this surface here. Okay, so now what we do at this point is fairly easy. We're just gonna mirror it. So we're just gonna mirror that coil over this uh, plane right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a circle array of that mirror, which is gonna grab coils going in both directions. We're going to choose the same uh, axes that we ran the coil with. And then on this case, I'm going to pick, I don't know, we'll just pick um, like 60 and we'll see what happens. And we'll add, I'll show you how to add this in here in a second to your parameter so you can control this with the form and make this a lot easier. Hey, we're only at six minutes. This is a pretty fast video for once, I guess. Hopefully the audio is coming in clear. I didn't check it ahead of time. So if it's not, I apologize. Now this is the heavy part of all this, is cutting all this geometry. So there is your basic uh, large neural. You would never use, I don't think you would ever use a neural this large. But let's go back into manage parameters and we're gonna add a couple user parameters. Oh, well, we can just do it here, I guess. We don't have to add user ones. But so we've got this 60, okay? So what we're gonna do that is we're gonna call this um, number of canurals. And what else do we want? Okay, so this is gonna be our how many revolutions. So we're gonna say this is gonna be neural, um, neural cut angle. Let's run with that right there and we'll make that one be a uh, in the form and this one be in the form. All right, so what we've done essentially is we've cut our neural. Now, uh, a drawback to Autodesk Inventor is you cannot work on your model with the parameters window open. So it would be nice to be able to sit right here and make some changes. I can make changes and see this, but it would be nice to be able to work on the model. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into iLogic. I know super scary, but not what we're getting ready to do. So just click on your iLogic. If you don't see iLogic right there, just click this plus sign and go to iLogic and then it'll show up in the um, in this little toolbar. I just moved mine over there. And then what you wanna do is you have one that's called rules and one that's called forms. Just click on the one that's forms and then right click out here in space and click add form. And what you're gonna see is the, the dimensions, the parameters that we checked as key values now show up in here. So what we can do is we know that we're gonna want length. So let's see, we're gonna want the neural angle and the neural depth and the length, and then we're gonna want, so I'm gonna put a little space in there between them to kind of separate them. Then we want the neural cut angle and we want the number of neurals. So what we've essentially got now is this little form over here that we can play with. So you just hit okay here. And then we can click on this form one and we can keep this box open and we can work on the model live from this little box. So what we're gonna do here, now you guys can change this. So if you wanted to change this to say, um, 30, you can. And I don't think you're going to have a neural that's going to be a uh, inclusive 60 degrees. Most of them cut or 40 or 90 degrees, but I'm just going to show you how this works here. Again, we're in the heavy lifting part because it's having to go through all that geometry and change that angle, which is going to affect the look of the whole thing. So that's why we've got this form here so we can affect this stuff, um, which, hey, the 60 degrees doesn't look too bad. So maybe we'll hang on to that. Although it's, it's a little weird though. It's looking a little weird. No, we're gonna go back to 45. Okay, so let's go back to the 45. And again, it's gotta rebuild all that geometry. So we're kind of in the waiting game here. 
You guys can uh, throw on some 80s music while we're doing this if you want to. Uh, wait for all this geometry to rebuild. Okay, so now what we've got is we've got our depth. So what we want to do is we want to change this depth. So if we go down to like 0 .0, uh, 0 0.075, we're going to affect how deep this neural is. So let's let that rebuild real quick. And you notice we got this nice sweeping curve coming around the outside uh, diameter of this part, which is exactly what we want. We don't want so like some fake hatch pattern that we put on the drawing that's just, you know, 45s crisscrossed. Okay, so because we cut our neural uh, shallower, um, we definitely are going to have to change, the, increase this number. So let's increase from one or from 60 to like 120. And we'll keep the neural cut angle the same. So this is just kind of where you're playing with it. And you're going to fine tune it. If you guys are in a machine shop, you're probably going to, your machinist is probably going to have a neural number that he's going to give you. And they can tell you how many uh, rotations or how many um, neural cuts, the number of neurals is going to be around uh, a certain diameter. And then you guys can build it the same. They'll also give you the depth of the neural and probably the angle too. So they should have all that information in whatever tool they're um, running on a lathe. So let's let this build real quick. We might need to increase it more than that. Okay, so that looks pretty good right there. So the neural does not really happen this fast. I'm editing out all the build times. So don't get um, a false sense of security that as soon as you change a number that it's gonna change. To rebuild that from 60 to 120 took about two and a half minutes. So just giving you guys an idea of how long that takes. So anyways, we're going to leave it right there for right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit done on the form. Okay, so just to give you guys an idea, when I hit done on that form, it had to rebuild again. So that was another two and a half minutes. And I'm running a very fast machine, and I'm running a 3090 Ti graphics card. So... Just keep that in mind when you're doing these neurals because um, they will bog the system down. But you can see you're getting very clean geometry from doing it this way because you're obviously you're cutting that geometry in. And to kind of give you an idea of what the drawing would look like for this, let me... Um, nope. Let me find a drawing here. Sorry, I gotta go find one that'll actually open. Let's use this one at, uh, let's use this one. Sure, we'll open it from there. And we're gonna place part 27. Um, okay. I guess it's going to make us save this. So let's go into here, part 27. We'll see how it bogs down the drawing as well. Okay, so we want a side view. There we go. And we want this like... Um, you, oh, not, not that. I want that the other way. Dang it. There we go. All right, let's let this build real quick. So this is what you guys are going to get. Now, you're really not going to dimension something like that, but normally what I do in this instance is I just do a leader line coming off there with, a, with text on this, and then I've confirmed with the machinist, they'll give me what size this is. There's a, there's a code for all the neural stuff, and I just call that out on there. Otherwise, you're going to be forced with having to do the um, what was mentioned above where you got to put in a shaded view and you got a fake hatch on there and all that jazz. So anyways, this works out pretty good. Just remember, it's very heavy on the part. So just keep that in mind. You don't want a, an assembly with a thousand parts and all of them are knurled in there. So all right. I hope this helps. Um, talk to you guys later.